Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be focusing on paper three, question one, and taking a closer look at text C, that is n-gram graph. What exactly is an n-gram graph? N-gram graph is a great tool to examine the frequency of words or phrases within a given corpus. And what is a corpus? It's a large and structured collection of written, spoken, or the recorded text. By studying the n-gram graph, we can study changes in language usage, the rise and fall of certain words or phrases, and even we can trace the impact of cultural, social, technological changes on language. The n-gram graph acts as a time machine, taking us back to different time periods in history to explore how certain words have gained or lost popularity over time, how grammatical structures have evolved, or how language has adapted to cultural and social changes. Throughout this video, we'll be analyzing the n-gram graph and discussing the reasons behind the changes we observe. We'll explore how language has adapted and transformed over the years. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos on language analysis. To analyze the n-gram graph, we need to consider a few things first. The first thing to understand is the graph interpretation. The x-axis represents the time period indicating the progression of years, and the y-axis represents the frequency of the words as a percentage. The values on the y-axis indicate how frequently these words appear. The graph may include separate lines or curves for each word representing their respective frequency over time. The height of the line at each point on the x-axis indicate the frequency of the word during that specific year. Let me show you the n-gram graph that was given in October-November 2022 past paper. And n-gram graph shows here how the usage of given adjectives uh, that is unbecoming and inappropriate has uh, changed over time. Unbecoming has been more prevalent uh, in the earlier years representing the language of the time. As the language evolved, inappropriate has gained popularity as a more commonly used term. And the reduction in the frequency of the adjective unbecoming and increased usage of the term inappropriate in modern English can be attributed to several factors. And what are those factors? Uh, the first one uh, may be semantic shift. A semantic shift means the meaning change. Unbecoming traditionally refers to becoming to the behavior or actions that are considered improper in terms of social norms, manners, or expectations. However, as the societal norms and values evolve, the concept of what is considered unacceptable behavior may have broadened. Inappropriate has a broader and more flexible connotation, encompassing a wider range of behaviors or actions that are not fitting in a given context. The second factor could be colloquial language. The word inappropriate has become a more colloquially accessible term that is widely used in everyday language conversations in various contexts compared to the relatively formal and archaic sounding word that is unbecoming. Inappropriate is also seen as a more neutral and objective term, whereas unbecoming may carry subjective judgments. The use of inappropriate allows for a more respectful and non-judgmental approach when discussing actions or behavior that are considered unacceptable. Let me show you another n-gram graph that was given in October-November past paper. Examining this n-gram graph from 1750 to 2000 provides visual evidence of the declining frequency of traditional forms and the rising frequency of a cetera as a replacement. The graph shows a steady decrease in the usage of these forms over time, while etc. would exhibit an upward trend in usage, particularly in the more recent years. And the reasoning could be simplification. Etc. provides a shorter and more concise form, making it easier and quicker to convey the intended meaning. Another reason could be greater need for efficiency in conveying messages using digital platforms etc. fits well within the constraints of character limits in text social media. Let me show you another n-gram graph from my June 2022 past paper. We can observe a decline in the frequency of the alternative spellings here over time while the word ceiling demonstrates an increase in usage. 
Here the word ceiling, that is C-E-I-L-I-N-G, has become the accepted and the standardized form of the word, while the word plaster and the plaster and C-I-E-L-I-N-G, ceiling, this spelling, they, they all have become fallen out of favor uh, due to changes in spelling. In the case of ceiling, that is C-I-E-L-I-N-G, uh, the change to the spelling C-E-I-L-I-N-G aligns more closely with the modern pronunciation. From the same months and year, we have another n-gram graph. And here, the n-gram graph shows a higher frequency for the phrase has become as compared to the phrase is become over the period from 1720 to 2000. The graph data indicates decline in the usage of the phrase is become and the corresponding rise in the usage of the phrase has become, which is a perfect construction for expressing the present perfect tense in English. Has become is a standard grammatical construction in English and it follows the patterns of using the auxiliary verb has followed by the past participle form of the verb. This structure has remained consistent over time. Here the graph from May June 2022 shows a higher frequency for wayward as compared to the word incorrigible over the period from 1700 to 2000. Though incorrigible was used more uh, in the past, the graph data indicates a decline in the usage of incorrigible and relatively higher frequency um, for wayward as a term more acceptable and commonly used in English language usage. The concept of behavior associated with being wayward may have remained relevant throughout the centuries as it implies deviation from expected or conventional behavior. On the other hand, the term incorrigible, which refers to the person or behavior that is difficult and impossible to correct, may have become less commonly used and replaced by the alternative terms. We would may be more versatile and applicable in different contexts, such as describing behavior actions or even physical objects. Incorrigible, on the other hand, is often used in more specific contexts, such as describing someone's character or an unchanging negative trait, and maybe less commonly used in everyday conversation. 